My name is Deborah Pascali Bonaro, and I'm a doula, a doula trainer. I'm also a childbirth educator and a teacher trainer with Lamaz International. But I really started on this journey with the birth of my own children. And coming from just an incredible legacy of knowing my great grandma growing up and still very close to my grandmother and my mother, who all had normal births, and most of them at home. And it ended up, my grandmother ended up catching her two younger siblings. And so when you're very young and you look at older women, they appear to be very old. And so when my very old great-grandmother would tell her birth stories about how she would just work, and when the baby was coming, she would just lean over the kitchen sink and give birth, I thought if this old lady could do this, this had to be pretty easy. So it really started me on a journey of just feeling that birth was something really powerful and positive. And that led me to begin to help other people. And how long have you been doing this now? I have to give this away. <laughs> <laughs> I've been a, a doula attending births for about 25 years now. A doula is a woman who provides emotional support and physical comfort for the woman, but also for her partner or any other people that she's bringing to the birth. So the doula is kind of creating this circle of support that's offering one really strong confidence because when we believe in the woman's ability to give birth, it helps her to believe in birth. And when she gets rid of the fear that she might have, when she understands that birth is a normal process, it'll go quicker and easier for her. So doulas bring this kind of nurturing presence, this belief in birth, and they're really there to do whatever she needs. So that could include massage, acupressure. We do a lot of what's called hoku, which is an acupressure point on the hand. A lot of techniques that really help her to get into positions that make labor easier and facilitate the rotation and the descent of the baby. But I always say the biggest thing is we're there emotionally, just offering that very special reassurance that makes everybody in the room relax and able to really enjoy birth. The amazing things with doulas is that we offer non-medical support. We're not to do any medical skills at all. And yet, we have a really profound effect on medical outcomes. So when a woman and her family have a doula at the birth, the studies show that she can have reduced rates of cesarean birth in some studies up to 50%. Length of labor is about an hour and a half shorter. I mean, who wouldn't want to have someone there that just your presence would make labor go quicker and easier? And because labor is going faster and easier, less women request drugs. And without medications, there's far less interventions for the mother and better outcomes for the baby as well. So having this kind of emotional reassurance has a real incredible effect on the physiology of the woman's body and the way that labor and birth will go for her, and thus her ability to greet her baby in a more peaceful, relaxed, loving way, and it enhances the bond between mothers, babies, and families. Yes, the humanization of birth is a term that's been used a bit more in South America and other countries, but it's really great to see this as a concept that's spreading around the world. My involvement really began in the United States with the Coalition for Improving Maternity Services. Their acronym is KIMS, and in 1996, KIMS created an initiative that was based for the U.S. with 10 steps to improving care called the Mother-Friendly Childbirth Initiative. In the last few years, there's been so much interest in this initiative around the world that we actually started now an international initiative called the International Mother Baby. And mother baby is one word because we don't ever want to separate mothers and babies. So the International Mother Baby Childbirth Initiative. And that is actually bringing together all the groups that are doing humanization, birth activism, grassroots movements all around the world. But not only that, it's bringing together all the organizations at the top. We're working with the World Health Organization, UNICEF, our International Confederation of Midwives, and many other organizations who have a goal of improving care for mothers and babies.
For a lot of women, birth has been so fearful in our culture today. And so, so many young women are so terrified that instead of really exploring all the possibilities in birth, they're just opting be out of fear to choose medical interventions. And I really wish that women knew that birth can be not only a powerful experience on every level for them, but for many women it can be pleasurable. And it's hard for people to think that, but the same hormones of love that brought your baby into your body are the same hormones that help your body to bring your baby out into the world. And when we can create environments that feel safe and protected and nurturing and sensuous, I say to people, create a romantic evening for yourself. What would that look like? And give birth in that environment. Birth can be this incredible journey. And you give birth to your baby, but you also give birth to yourself as a mother. And it brings so many joys into your life. I just want everyone to know to trust their bodies. Your body grew your baby. It can birth your baby. I think we need to use media in every form, from articles, books, and more of that is happening now. But I also think that women need to gather. Young women need to get with women who've had really positive, powerful births and hear their stories, read good birth stories, and try not to listen to all the terrible stories. I think it's easy to hear them and let them become the overriding force. But really search out those good stories, because they're out there and they will help you trust your own body and birth your baby. I think the catalyst for change right now is the fact that our technocratic model is really kind of pressing so far where we're reaching levels, at least in my area in New Jersey, where 50% of our babies are starting to be born by major abdominal surgery. This is crazy. And we're starting to see that this has a profound effect physically and emotionally on mothers and babies. Women are coming out of birth traumatized, an experience that could be ecstatic is traumatic. This is terrible, not only for the woman and the baby, but her family and for society. So I think we're actually at a point, kind of that tipping point, where people are starting to say, this isn't right. And the awareness is growing that there has to be a better way for this. And I think the catalyst that's going to push us there is the media showing people that there are other options, in that women are starting to gather in groups. One of my dreams I'd love to see happen is if we could start like every Monday morning at Starbucks from 10 to 12, have birth stories and invite women to come, old and young, if you've given birth or not, come and listen to women's stories. I really think that if we can start making places in community for women to gather, and men too, and to really reclaim this incredible, powerful time in our lives, that that will bubble up. I think it's interesting that in other aspects of women's health, women have been really strong advocates and have gotten out. We've really explored breast cancer and so many other aspects of women's health, but why have we allowed giving birth to kind of fall off the radar screen? And I think the time is now to get it back on the agenda and make it a strong part because I strongly believe that birth is the foundation for our health and well-being for all our life. And we all are born. We all need to pay attention to this issue and care about how the next generation is coming into the world. When babies are welcomed into love and kindness, you can just see them. They're born and they're lifted by their mothers many times right up into their chest. And this kind of outer womb being on their breasts, they just let go and you see them relax. They look at their parents. They go eye to eye, skin to skin, heart to heart. And it really is this very peaceful experience. But when they're born, in a very medicalized setting where they're taken or pulled or sucked out or cut out of their parents and then taken over to a warmer that looks like something that's better for McDonald's french fries than for babies. The babies, you can see them, they startle, they just don't know where they are, they begin to cry. We're starting to understand that when a baby separated from its mother, its adrenaline levels go way up and we know adrenaline and stress are not good for anyone. 
and the baby cries, saying, Mom, where are you? Get me back to you. And they only stop crying when they're just so exhausted they can't cry anymore. And these babies, how do they trust the world? Their first experience is negative. No one's there for them. There's no love. They're handled rough. Sometimes I feel like people aren't even thinking that they're handling a human life. They just rub them and move them and place them here and there without even talking to them. We would never treat another adult human being that way. We would never touch them in that way, not talk to them, not tell them what we're doing to them. So I do think we have an opportunity to really look at how we're caring for babies and how profoundly that sets that baby up to really understand, is the world a safe and loving place? Or is it a place that you have to have your stress hormones high, you have to be afraid, and you never know what's coming? And I think that plays a lot into the violence and the drug use that we're seeing today.